now, the Crypt Keeper of Creepy, the provocative prince of the tweens, the nightmare from Neptune, it's Zabu Jard! You know, I don't mean to get... <clears throat> I don't mean to get... <clears throat> I don't mean to get gay. <sighs> These soda pops are destroying my throat. I can't even drink soda anymore without it destroying the back of my throat. I'm not even kidding. Now if I try to drink soda, which I've been doing every day again, full of sugar, it destroys my throat. <clears> throat> I have to clear my throat. And it burn I think it just burns away my throat or something. I don't really know. And I'm not even drinking a name brand soda. I'm drinking off brand soda. I'm not even drinking straight piss from the devil's your uh, fucking foul's penis, which is the big name brand ones like Coke and Mountain Dew. I'm drinking off brand ones that aren't even name brand. And um it just now my throat hurts when I drink soda and I don't know why. Because I only stopped drinking soda for like six or ten months or something. But now that I'm drinking it again, it's like I know it's good for my teeth, I know it's good for my brain, and my body, and my muscles, but it's just destroying my throat, and I don't know why. I don't know why. Um, anyways. Um, as far as the New Testament goes, you know, if you're not even going to read the original book in, in Hebrew, or Greek, or Aramaic, or whatever it was that it was written in, which is Greek in the New Testament, I think, if you're not going to sit down and learn Greek and learn the exact words that the prophets in that book wrote from that was divine inspiration from God, because that's what people say about their religious books, such as Old and New Testament, that the words come from God through divine inspiration, that he told them what to write. Well, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to read a King James Version in English. And uh, this has been translated about 69 times in the last 2,000 years. And it's not Greek, it's actually a whole different language. But not even that, it's actually a translation way off from the original English translations. And instead of reading the New Testament, you might as well say you're reading King James Diary. Or a Lutheran Diary. Or a journal written by a Jehovah's Witness. Or a journal diary written by a Catholic, uh, whatever the hell translation Catholic fags use, I don't even know. I don't even know. There's so many translations. God's word, it doesn't even, it doesn't even matter what all, what I write down. King James is saying to himself, you know what, actually, I think God was trying to say this in this passage. I'm going to change these words to this. Oh, and God said this here? Eh, I actually think I'm going to change these words to this. And it's not even specifically Mr. James' fault. It's just that Greek and English are completely different languages. So you're going to get different words crapped out from the original into the new one. And you don't have to deal with that with the Old Testament Hebrew. Straight from God's mouth, okay? You don't even have to deal with that. It's all perfectly specific, the words and letters God used. New Testament? Eh. Take a 69,000th different translation from a reptile lizard in the desert, and, well, he made a hissing sound, and that's what, he's, that's what God was trying to say in this passage. And Jesus said here, uh, do what thou wilt. Or, but in this translation, he says, be, be a, I'm a Chuck E. Cheese, I'm a Burger King kid. What's that, what's the restaurant I'm thinking of? I'm a, I'm a something kid. What, what am I thinking of, guys? I'm a Toys R Us kid. <laughs> the Jan knows, Jan used to work at a Toys R Us. He worked in the toy aisle. I'm not even kidding. Jan worked in the toy aisle of a Toys R Us in California. This was the, this was the early 90s. Just kidding, this was the early 2000s. Ska was at its peak. Jan would go home every night and listen to the newest, hittest, fullest, the biggest, baddest Ska albums, new Ska albums, with awesome Ska bands. <laughs> with awesome Ska bands, such as the early works of Blink-182. And, um... Uh, Real Big Fish. And, uh... You know, uh... Fuck. Uh, 
I don't know. I, there's, I don't remember all, all the ska bands that Sir Jan loved at the time when he was working at Toys R Us. And, uh, <laughs> the first time I actually met Jan, he, he whispered in my ear. He said, can I tell you that? I said, sure. He, he says, okay, come here. And I go over to his ear and he whispers into my ear and he says, I'm actually a Toys R Us kid. I'm like, wait, what? He's like, I'm actually a Toys R Us kid. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, well, I work at Toys R Us. I said, oh, you're a Toys R Us boy. And all that's real and true. And I didn't make any of that up. And, uh, you know, all of us sin all the time in weird ways we don't even, we don't even realize. I'm talking about probably like a trillion sins per second. And you know, I'm not even kidding. You and me are, are walking sin machines. Even if you think you're perfect and, and you never sin, or you're thinking, well, I, I don't do anything bad. What's wrong with me, Jer? Our DNA is literally fused with serpent Sam DNA from when Sam banged Eve and when Adam banged Lil. They literally effed up our gay DNA to a point where we literally have sin infused into our gay DNA, which used to be like divine holy DNA that Adam had before he spilled his seed for 150 years, which sent him down from the upper realms to the lower realms and got him kicked out of the garden and stuff like that, probably. And here we are now, okay? And, um, you know, like, I listen to a bunch of Christian podcasts, and by a bunch, I mean... At least, no, probably like four to six different Christian podcasts I listen to. And one Jewish podcast. And now, when I'm listening to these these Christian podcasts in my head, I'm just fighting it the whole time. I'm thinking, what? No, 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 no. Because it's all about Jesus Christ. And I'm like, no. They're like, pray to Jesus. I'm like, no, pray to the Father. And they're like, okay, you better pray to Jesus now. And I'm like, no, 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 pray to the Father now. So when I'm listening to these Christian podcasts, it's just arguing in my head and I can't even enjoy the material because I'm like, no, 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 no. Um, and, I don't know, but they're interesting, so I like to listen to them. Um, uh, the Jewish podcast, it's okay. There's, there's barely, any, there's not even enough. There's no, nowhere near enough cool Jewish podcasts out there. Please, if you're a Jewish guy, make a cool podcast so I can listen to it. Because I'd love to listen to it, and there's barely any. And a lot of them are probably in Hebrew. And a lot, and some of them are just kind of too boring. It's just like an old rabbi, he's boring. It's like, come on, I want to hear something interesting, you know? There's, there's like, probably barely any Kabbalah podcasts, probably barely, if any, Zohar podcasts. Like, I want to hear some juicy stuff, you know? But there's not, there, but there's a ton of Christian conspiracy podcasts out there, so I'll take what I can get. And they're, they're pretty good anyways. Um, the ones I like are uh, KJ Osborne, which was scariest movie ever before the Illuminati took down his YouTube channel a month ago. Which had over 600,000 subscribers, I think. Uh, welcome to the club. Uh, KJ Osborne, he's still on Rumble. His YouTube was scariest movie ever channel. Uh, there's Dabu7. There's Richie from Boston. There's um, uh, uh, a call for an uprising. There's um, Understanding Conspiracy, the, Nef the Nephilim looked like clowns. There's, um, there's one more I wanted to list. The Jewish one I like is called Rabbi Jaror, D-R-O-R, recommend it, he's good, he's a good guy. And uh, you learn some cool Jewish stuff from that one. And uh, the last Christian one I liked was, uh, frick, what was it? Oh, it's Jonathan Kleck. Uh, not sure if he's still on YouTube anymore. A lot of these guys, you know, anyways. And there was one more I kind of, sort of liked, which was, um, do, 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 what was it called? I don't remember. It's like the end times, something, something. I don't remember. It's whatever. I haven't been watching that one as much, though. Um, because he mostly just repeats his favorite verses from the Bible while showing clips of current events. Which all current events are fake and gay anyways, but still, you know. I like to see some current events uh, mixed in. You get to see what 
the pit of hell is uh, trying to force on the sheeple through the news anchors, right? Speaking of mixing with our gay DNA, right? Those, that liquid serum that came out a few years ago. Uh, I'm sure it's probably trying to change people's DNA as well through the black goo in it or whatever. They're trying to add a third DNA strand to our double helix DNA. If you type in the Queen of England DNA strand on YouTube, you'll see the video of the uh, Queen of England showing off a third DNA strand as she lights the uh, her castle lawn with uh, fucking LED lights or something gay like that. Um, I mean, we're in a weird realm, you know? It's weird stuff going on. It's boring, it's miserable, but it's also kind of interesting and weird and very complicated, okay? Some people think we're in the little season. If you don't know what that is, it's a New Testament concept where Jesus and the Millennial Kingdom, he reigned for a thousand years and made these beautiful buildings that we see in all of our cities, you know, the giant cathedrals that uh, they tell us they built with a hammer and nails 200 years ago and over a, over a three-year time span. Uh, there's a cathedral in like all of our cities that are beautiful. Anyways, Jesus Christ came and reigned for a thousand years and all the people built these wonderful, beautiful structures and he just left about two or three hundred years ago and now you and me are stuck here for some reason. Our ancestors were gay and cursed. And so Jesus didn't take us along on a spaceship ride to the far off other realms or wherever or heaven or wherever you want to call it. And so our parents gave birth to us or maybe we were made in cloning factories or something, uh, YouTube... Uh, What's it called? The uh, Cabbage Patch Kid uh, Kids uh, Conspiracy. You'll find that on Mind Unveiled channel. Great channel as well. And um, that we were all made from cloning uh, uh, cloning uh, machines uh, two, 250 years ago or so. And all of our grandparents were actually orphans. And I asked my grandpa if he remembers his parents. And he said, no, he was an orphan. So I said, ooh, I knew it, I knew it. But some people are angry in the comments and they, they'll say, no, I've traced my lineage back 350 years and uh, I wasn't made in no damn clone machine. People have written that in the comments before, so you never know, you know, some people trace their, their history back, but I haven't really done that. I've traced mine back, not very far, maybe 100 years, maybe 150, or something like that. But anyways, um, Um, anyway, so they think that Jesus came and, and left already, and now we're in the little season, and, and God has kind of left, or Jesus has left. And so now there's a giant, beautiful kingdom in heaven which gives us blessings and stuff from the sky, and it's up to us to like make this place better. Um, and that the devil has been put away, and the demons have been put away in, into the pit of hell, like the tribulation says or whatever the rapture stuff whatever i don't know you'll just have to google the little season and it's very complicated i don't really know how to know even, even know where to start but um yeah anyways fascinating stuff i know and uh you know people who own cats i've called i've heard them called poop machines before i thought do i want a poop machine in my room i don't think so i I don't want to clean up that crud, cat crud. Um, although cats are, you know, I don't want to clean up cat shit, I don't. But cats, you know, cats, they are kind of cool. They are cool. I want to pet orangutan. Or some pet pigeons. Something cute, something cute. Orangutans, pigeons, maybe a cat. Um, I don't know, maybe birds or a lizard or frogs. But I barely take care of myself. I don't know if I could take care of another animal, you know. Um, so I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I really want to even try that. I could. I don't know if it would go over very well. I don't. I, I would prefer. You know, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to right now. I actually don't think I'm going to do that. I'd have to go to the store and pick up it, pick its food, pick up its food, you know, that could take forever, I don't want to do that. I would like to raise meat rabbits to eat, but I don't think my sister would, would let me do that in the backyard, um, so I can't even do that. 
So when the, when the country shuts down soon, I'm not even going to be able to have meat rabbits to eat because um, I'm not even growing meat rabbits right now or, or my own fruit and vegetables. You know, I actually thought about growing my own fruit and vegetables inside my room using like a, a, a heat lamp or, a, or a, sun, a sun lamp or whatever it's called so that you could have the lamp on at all times and grow the food in your room. That would be pretty cool, don't you guys think so? Um, so I think that would be cool. So I'll, I'll look into that maybe. I would like to grow my own food, but I'm too lazy to go outside and do it. So maybe if I did it in my own room, it would work out. Let me know if you have tips on that in the comments. Um, I had a cup of wine yesterday, two days ago. First, you know, I barely have any alcohol now. And because I just don't even, I don't even, I don't know, it's just whatever. Like, I don't really care. It's not, it's not that big of a joyous occasion for me to drink alcohol. Um, if I go to a wedding, maybe I'll get drunk. But besides that, it's like, eh, I don't know. So I had a big cup of wine, and it was okay. And that was it. And I was like, man, do I usually, do I usually, do I really used to like to drink, like, all the time or whatever? Just for, just for fun? With, like, I'm like, I don't even really get anything out of it. It's just like, it's not a big deal. I haven't thought about, like, do I even want to drink this wine? Like, I don't really... I thought, ah, whatever. I'll give it another ch I'll give it another chance. But... It was just... It was... It was fine. And I watched, uh... Cart I watched the new Smiling Friends season on, on the wine. And I think I probably remembered less of it. Because of the wine. So now I probably missed out on remembering some of the funny parts because I was... Kind of intoxicated in wine. So it made me forget what I was watching. Like I was, I was too like I wasn't paying enough attention, maybe because I was I had too much a little, little bit too much of the wine in me or something. And then it kept me awake longer than I wanted to be awake. The wine did, and so that made me a little grumpy because wine will keep you awake, or alcohol will. I don't know. And so that's annoying. Um, so there you go. Alcohol's cringe. Might as well start smoking cigarettes or something. Like, do something fun. You don't need alcohol to have fun. Um, just do something cool. Like, I don't know. Drinking ice cold water. I don't know what it is you guys do. So. Anyways. Yeah. You know, I was talking to an e-girl, but I think she's done. I think she's done with me. I think she's done playing with me. I think she's done toying with me. And, I don't know, just, I just like feel, it's like all women are betrayers. They'll betray you. They're all into betrayal. They'll betray, they'll betray you. They're betrayers. And they're, I don't know, just, it's just, I mean, maybe men, maybe, maybe men are betrayers too. Maybe everyone's a damn betrayer. But you know, I don't have any luck on Tinder. I've never gone on a date from anyone on Tinder or whatever. If you guys dare just use Tinder, you know, <clears throat> I never really had any luck on Tinder or anything like that. And uh, also, dating apps cost a lot of money. If I even wanted to try dating apps, it costs a lot of money. And I just don't really... It feels like I just don't have luck with uh, gals sometimes. That they all betray me. or betrayers. And... That's just how it is. I'm starting to think I'm like Terry Davis. Where I'm not a genius like he was, but he's, it seemed like he was alone for a long time. Where he didn't date women or something like that. And it was just sort of like a fate-driven curse type thing. And um, it's starting to feel like I'm like Terry Davis. And by that I mean it's like a fate-driven curse where you're never married, you're always single. No no, and gals, gals don't want to be with you or whatever. Or they're, they, they run away from you or something like that. I don't, get, I don't really get it. 
it's almost like magnetism. And I'm like the positive end of a magnet and women are also a positive. Um, so that if I go near them, then it's, it pushes them away. I think that's how magnetism works. You have to ask Jan in the comments. Positive, opposites attract, yeah. So po if, if the woman was negative, then, then we would attract, yeah. So it's like I'm positive and then she's also positive. HIV positive. And so if I go next to a woman, it'll physically push her away like I'm like magnetism. And if I talk to one or look at one or think about one, it'll mentally push them away. So if I looked at one in real life, she'd probably start getting mentally pushed away. Like a magnet. Like a polar um, positive end of a magnet. Um, uh, it'd, take, it'd take a miracle to find a gal who isn't a betrayer. Who would actually... Who would actually... I don't, I don't really get gals anyways. I don't understand them. I don't understand them, and I don't expect them to understand me. And some people can be understood, and I can, and I also can't. My jokes are way too highbrow for any woman or man to understand. They're very intelligent jokes and pranks. I'm kind, I call myself a prankster and a master of all pranks. And all my pranks are very high-end pranks. You're not going to find any other pranker on YouTube like me. There's another one. There's no other one. And I think because my pranks are so powerful, I think that also would uh, keep away any woman. For example, if I was in a room with a woman and I thought it would be a funny prank to scare her by screaming at her, or, or I had this idea the other day where if I go to dinner with a woman and I have a plate in front of me, a, a plate made out of uh, Rosalind China glass, uh, wouldn't it, it would be really funny if I picked up the plate and I threw it at the wall out of nowhere. We're eating, having a nice time at dinner. Yeah, this is good. Pick it up, throw it at the fucking wall, shatters the plate. And she's like, what the, f what the F is going, what the hell is going what's wrong with you? What's going on? And I say, and I'm like, and then she looks at me and I'm like, what the hell? Have you ever seen that before? Have you ever seen something like that before? Have you ever seen like a plate just freaking get th uh, like somehow get thrown and like break against a wall and make a loud sound and like all the food and the crumbles and the crumbs and the pieces of shards of glass and plate go everywhere like that was insane that was crazy and then i would have to like go get another plate fill it up with some new food and then i just act like nothing happened like that's just a wow that's like a chef's kiss that's like one of the most beautiful pranks i've ever thought of in my entire life that i've never done Actually, I kind of tried that, um, but not to that extent, not to that extent. But these are the most powerful pranks that anyone's ever thought of. And they're so powerful because they don't even make sense, they're nonsensical pranks. And so they're already out of the box thinking pranks, you're not going to expect this, you're not going to think about this. If I'm eating dinner with someone, I'm not going to expect them to take their plate and throw it against the ground or the wall or break it and lose all their food they just paid for. And then say, what the hell, have you ever seen that before? Have you ever seen something like that? What the hell was that? Did you see that? My plate was just like, here, and now it's gone? Excuse me, what? Throw in some hashtags. Hashtag, well that, hashtag, well that's a, hashtag, well, now what do I do? You know, throw in some stupid Zoomer fag fucking gay ass TikTok hashtags or whatever. I mean, these are pranks that haven't been seen for thousands of years, and they're coming into my head and expecting me to fulfill the prank. Um, what's the word I'm thinking of? Like, it's like destiny, but different. Prank, destiny, prank, revelation, the revelation of jokes, gags, and pranks, cartoon ideas, all this stuff is brand new concepts and ideas. This is, this is, this is cool stuff. Anyways, women wouldn't even understand that because they're way too dumb and idiotic and retarded because all they care about is putting pretty ass bows on their hair and making caramel macchiato lattes and they'll take some whip, whipping cream and they'll, uh, they'll draw like a little heart inside their cappuccino mochianos and they'll drink that and they'll say, ooh, look at it, and they'll take a picture for their Instagram, their Insta as they call it. Look, drew a heart into my cappuccino. Hashtag feeling loved. You know, and I take that back. Women are cool. Um, I'm just, you know, I'm just bitter because... Just a lonely day. And it's mine. 
the most loneliest day of my life. That's System of a Down, by the way. That's a Lonely Day by System of a Down. You know, people go insane when they're away from God, away from the opposite sex partners, away from human civilization, away from other humans, away from animals, away from insects, away from um, st stuff. Humans go insane when they're away from contact with others, other physical, social contact. When they're away from video games, anime, soda pop, cartoons, anything. Humans can go insane say, if, they, if they study the Torah too much, sometimes they can go insane. A lot of Jewish people become paranoid schizophrenics when they get too when they get when they get dive too, too, dive too deep into the Kabbalah stuff because <laughs> it's powerful stuff because you're dealing with the Hebrew letters, which are the most powerful things God created in this realm that created this realm just by the letters themselves. So you're dealing with when you're using Hebrew letters, you need to learn the language on Duolingo, please. When you're dealing with the Hebrew language letters, you're literally creating realms and worlds and universes when you use the letters which is what Elohim did when he created this realm using the Hebrew letters and then he said I hope that they don't need that fruit of knowledge because then they'll know Hebrew and they'll know how to create their own worlds which is what people are doing now they're creating their own worlds like Elohim did created this world and Elohim put that fruit of knowledge up there in the tree so if we took the knowledge and he would know that we would use Hebrew to create our own worlds and he didn't want he didn't want that so that's why you need to learn Hebrew. You'll start creating your own worlds, homunculuses, worlds, realms, all that gay crud. Cool crud. And that's why you need to learn it. It's to make your own world realm. And we need to fix this world realm because this place is a gay evil crap hole. And that's why people study Jewish Kabbalah. It's to fix this world with world peace, which is, which is called Tikkun Olam. And that's what it, world peace is, and that's how you fix it. One cool thing about being a night owl, which I am, where everyone else in the world is asleep at night and I'm awake all night. You know what the Zohar says about people who are awake all night? They're rectifying the night. The night is inherently evil because of the moon and the nighttime and there's no light. People who stay up all night, they're fixing the world through world peace through studying prayer of Hebrew letters and Zohar by rectifying the night and it just so happens I'm into this stuff and plus I'm awake at night God made me to be awake at night and I'm up all night rectifying the night what the hell I'm fixing the world peace in the entire world realm at night no one else is awake doing it everyone else is asleep being gay idiots and retards in their dreams in the world of Yisad where they go when they dream I'm awake all night I'm the only one I'm the one making world peace rectifying the night by praying all night are you kidding me what an honor, privilege Hashem has given to me to be the only night owl in the entire history of the entire world of realm, and I'm the one. It's called rectifying the night. Why does the word rectifying have the same word as rectum? What's up with that? You can answer that. Why is Genesis also called bear of shit, and that has the word shit in it? I have another. That's another question I have. I know Hebrew is different from English, but still, why is it called bear of shit? I mean, shit means something in the English language, and it's not pretty. I'll tell you that much. It's not pretty at all. At all. I'm just saying say in Jewish not pretty at all. Um, if you're night owls, you're rectifying the night. Congratulations. You're already doing something cool with your entire life and you didn't even know it. You didn't even know it, but now you know. Now you know. So there you go. There you are. I see you. Haha. <laughs> there you are. <sighs> so yeah. Something else that's weird about oh, Jesus Christ. He. He. He died and then he came back to life. That's, um, that's necromancy, which is illegal in the Old Testament. And you say, well, that doesn't count. He's God, so he came back using God powers. That doesn't count as necromancy. People will tell me that in the comments. Just kidding. People 
They might say that in their mind if they're watching this. They might say that in their brain. They might whisper it. Okay, fine, I'll give you that. But he also raised other people from the dead. I don't remember how many he raised from the dead, but I remember he raised... I think at least one or two, and probably more than that. And the God in the Old Testament said, you remember what he says? He says, don't do necromancy. So let me ask you a question. Why would God come back after writing the Old Testament, after he wrote, please don't do necromancy? Why would God write that in the Old Testament and then come back to Earth, to Malkuth, do a bunch of necromancy, including on himself, and then leave. You see how I'm finding a lot of holes in the story here? A lot of cracks in the armor? About this Jesus, this Jesus uh, thing here? Why would he do it? Why would he do necromancy when he forbid it in the Old Testament? How does that make any sense? I just have questions, okay? I'm not trying to sound like a friggin' atheist clown or whatever. I hope I never become a satanic atheist person or anything like that. Um, because that would be cringe if I did that. Personally for me. That's how I feel about it. Because... I have to sneeze. I can't sneeze. There's too much beauty in this world to think that there's not a God who created it. And that's my main argument against against atheists. Everything here is too there's too much pretty stuff. Like my I have I have a favorite dog. And she's a really cute dog, and she's a, um, what's it called? Uh, her breed of dog is a, um, I don't remember. She's some fucking, she's like a poodle or something. She's not a poodle, but, I don't know. She's kind of like a fucking dog or whatever, but she's a really cute dog, and so... If I even look at that dog, I'm like positive that God made that dog. Because she's a great little pup. And you can see it with other people too. If you see an attractive person or a really kind person or someone helping someone else, you're like, oh, there's God right there in that person who's, who's shining through them. You know? And everything is so symmetrical. You know, God split our, our bodies in half. We have two arms, and two legs, and two halves of our brain, two lungs. You guys aren't going to believe this, except early men, mankind, probably only had one leg, maybe, and God split them into two legs. And, and if you remember, he says he curses the serpent to walk on his belly. The serpent had, like, one long leg. You know? That's like serpents. They got one long leg. God split our legs into two. We don't have like a serpent tail thing anymore. You know, we're, we're not on our belly crawling around like the serpent is. We got two legs. And I don't know if you noticed, but your feet are perpendicular to your legs. And there's a reason for that too in the Zohar, which I don't really remember. But your feet branch out totally perpendicular sideways from your body from your from your um, from your from your legs you know why do you need that why do you even need feet why do you need a body part that branches out like that there's a cool reason for all this stuff that we take for granted that we don't understand and you can learn about it and uh, the so our stuff I mean am I crazy for <laughs> This isn't fucking rocket science to put this crap about Jesus. Like, don't do necromancy. Oh, God comes along and does a bunch of necromancy and tells everyone to worship him. I'm, f I'm seeing a little, it just seems a little questionable to me right now. It seems very questionable to me. 
But, you know, there's plenty of accounts of demons leaving people in the name of Jesus Christ, so I think there's could be something to that as well. There you go. I mean, there's there's evidence for for both for both our arguments, okay? Technically, Jesus' spirit is a part of a Jewish a, a part of a force of a bloodline of creatures which is called the Messiah Ben Yosef which is the other half of the Messiah Ben Ben Messiah Ben Yosef and the other half is Messiah Ben Frank I can't remember I can't remember Anyways, I'm not the best teacher at this stuff, so, yeah, there you go. I just have some questions, that's all. I'm just a question. I'm a questionable boy, and I've got some freaking questions that I need answering. And I pray about this every day for answers from Hashem, trust me. I pray every day about this stuff, and sometimes I'm left waiting to hear, to get, to hear back. Sometimes I'm trying to figure out and hear back. And I don't meditate enough. I don't read the word enough. You know, there's more stuff I could be doing. I'm not out there helping homeless people or whatever. I'm not I'm not helping people on the streets. I'm just making cartoons. Okay? That's all I'm doing. It's, what kind of a life is this? What am I doing with the very short amount of time I have left in this gay Cursed realm. Answer that. Making cartoons? <sighs> Answer that, huh? Riddle me this, Chandler. Riddle me that, you know? What are we all doing with this limited time we have in this realm? We're not even out every day helping homeless people in the fucking cafeteria lunch line. We're not out fucking doing something helpful with the very limited time we have left in this cursed realm especially before everything just turns into dog crap like it is right now gas will be too much for anyone to drive be a fucking nuke going off all over the place starving people everywhere soon no jobs no money robots cleaning everyone's scrotums in front of scrotum cleaning centers outside of costco and walmart forced injunctions of medical serums that people are forced to take to keep their penis you know, it's going to be crazy. So while things are pretty peaceful and chill here, we should be, you know, doing something to help others and ourselves. I don't know, or whatever. But, here we are. Here we are. What are people going to say at my funeral? They're going to say, oh, well, you know, he hung out in his room a lot. The end. Cool. That's cool. So there you go. I gotta do another patrol. I'll BRB. I still have a lot of dreams, and last night I dreamt. I was with a gal, I think. Romantic. I have a couple of romantic gal dreams. All the time. Anyways, in the dream last night, I don't know, I, she, was, she went somewhere or whatever. And then I'm in the ocean. I'm a little bit off the coast. And I'm on a wooden dock that's kind of out in the ocean a little bit, not too far from the coast, maybe, you know, two or three hundred feet off the coast. And there's a cannon next to me with big old cannonballs. And there's like some cannonballs firing near me, you know, hitting the wooden dock. Oh man, I gotta load up this cannon and fire back at the coast at what's like firing at me and shit. Um, that's uh, pretty much all I remember. It's just like, you basically, 
it was reminiscent of the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean ride at Disneyland, which is the prettiest ride there since it has nice warm yellow-orange lighting with swamp atmosphere, and I already love swamps with the sounds of swamps. Then you go through a tunnel, and uh, then you're out at sea with a Captain Hook's fucking ship firing at you, and Jack Sparrow, and his ship's firing back, and there's two big pirate ships. And you know, when I went there to Disneyland a month ago, my mom, with my mom of course, and she said, didn't there used to be a whole bunch of big ass pirate ships in on this ride? And I'm like, wait, what? Because I didn't really remember that. I just kind of remembered the main two. Jack Sparrow's ship and then Captain Blackbeard's ship or whatever are firing at each other. But my mom's like, no, I could have sworn that for the last 40 or 50 years, there'd always be a whole bunch of giant ships in this on this ride. So let me know if you guys remember that too in the comments, because I don't remember that. <clears throat> I'm sure I can just look at a video from the 90s of the ride and see if there's way more than two ships. I went there a month or two, a month ago or so, and there was only two ships on the ride. Only two. So maybe the other ones, they had to get rid of or take out because they were really big ships they're really big props or whatever they're huge you know they're, they're the size of a real ship a, a real pirate ship I mean um, and uh, yeah my dreams are kind of similar to that I've had a lot of dreams this year of being chased by giant animals. And I don't really know why. I've been chased this year by a giant tiger, giant T-Rex, giant shark, giant leopard, a huge giant group of lions, um, a hood creature from the hood, from the ghetto. Um, I think that's about it. I think that's maybe that's all of them, but just a lot of dreams of being chased by these giant creatures, and I don't know why. Oh, and a bear. I was chased by a fucking bear like a few weeks ago in my dream, maybe two or four weeks ago. What's that all about? Why am I having so many dreams where I'm being chased by stuff? What is going on? Why? What is going on with me? What's with these dreams? The king, the king of nightmares, who rules over Yisod, where we go when we dream, is in fact Sam, the angel of death, as told in the Kabbalah, and maybe the Zohar too. The same guy who banged Eve, supposedly, and messed up our DNA and caused us to be cursed creatures is also the king of the realm of dreams. And I don't like to say his full name, but yeah, Sam rules over Yisod, where we go and we dream. In Yisod, when you go there, the um because when you when because when you're in a dream state, when you're in this these other worlds in the tree of life, um there's no back to the tree in Yisod. There's no, there's no backside. So when you're in a dream, if you ever try to look behind you, you'll notice you don't have a back or a butt. You don't have a back at all. You're only a front creature. You only have the front side of your form because you're only the front part of the tree. In the realm of Yisod of dreams, you won't have a backside. You won't have a back. You can't see your back. Just a little interesting fact. Try it out in your dream if you're feeling gay. Try to look behind yourself. I can't even see behind myself right now, and I'm awake. 
So maybe I don't have a backside there either. I don't know. You never know. I wish I lived in a swamp. I would play banjo on, in the swamp. That's what I would do. That would be my thing. Um, I'd have a giant animatronic frog, and people could come by, and I don't know. It'll all make a swamp ride. That's what I would do. If I could do it all over again, just start my life over from scratch, I'd make a fucking swamp ride. Sorry for cursing, and I would charge five bucks a ride to get on the boat and then you go around the swamp and then there's a little frog and there's a banjo player or something it's literally what i would do with my life if i if i could do it all over again i would create a swamp ride i mean i'd climb mount everest i'd track down bigfoot track him in a cage put him in a cage Put him on display. I'd do all sorts of crap. I'd go ghost hunting. I would just have a job as a ghost hunter. Or I would break into abandoned buildings and film. And I'd do stuff like that. And try not to get killed by homeless people or, or ghosts. That's literally what I would do. So yeah. So. So yeah. Yeah. Here's the question, if, if God, if God loves you, okay, and he does, and you love God, do you think he would just let you go to hell for not believing in Jesus Christ or something? I'm leaning towards... No. I think if God loves his children, which hopefully you're, you're his children, you know what I mean, then I don't think he would let us go to hell or, or want us to go to hell. Or, you know, I get there's free will for all these people who go down a dark path and kind of end up in hell or whatever it is, but for normal kind people I don't think I don't think Hashem would let those people wind up in in hell, you know. When God on the first day God said it was good or Elohim, I don't remember. But on the second day, I think it was Elohim or someone, I think, who created the earth, the firmament, and hell. And he, he did not say the second day was a good day. Do you know why? It's because he created hell on the second day. Now it'd be a Tuesday. And that's definitely why Garfield hates Tuesdays so much. I think we can all agree on that. Taco Tuesday? I don't think so. Creating hell on Tuesday, and that's more like it. Okay? So, if you're like me, five or ten years ago, worried you're gonna go to hell, I would say just kind of chill out. Like, frick, I lost my train of thought. Um, oh, that's right, I remember, I remember now, I remember. So, one of the most important things about this life in this realm right now for all of us is something, it's a three-word phrase, and it's called fear of God, okay? As long as you have a fear of God, then I think that's really important for anyone living here in this realm. Because it just is, trust me. And, uh, but the weird thing about that is that fear is kind of a primal, banal, 
I know that has the word anal in it, emotion. And fear is used by dictators, right? Ang uh, fear, distrust, uh, evil, wickedness, distress, depression, anxiety, fear, division. Fear is used by dictators, right, to get what they want, to brainwash people through fear and evil and anger and things like this. But fear of God is different, probably. And that it's, you know what, I don't even really understand it that well, maybe. I, I, don't, I, don't know how, I don't know if I have enough knowledge on it to speak of it. So, you should probably just research it yourself. Just type in fear of God on uh, Google and see, see, what, uh, see what comes up. Just trust me. If you didn't get anything else out of the podcast, that's a really important thing. Because that, it just is. I don't know how to explain it. It's one of those things you just can't explain, I guess. And I feel like when I was Christian for like 10 years, I don't think I really had the f fear of I don't know if I really had that fear of God in me. When you have a fear of God, I think you start acting like it. And I think maybe I just wasn't acting like it, you know? So, that's what I had to say about that. There's also a song that's really catchy that I like called, called Fear of God. It's kind of like a techno song or something. And it's, um, or no, maybe it's a band. I, I don't remember, but it's a good song. So. Yeah. Hey, guys. word genome which sounds like another word you're probably thinking of sounds like another word. do you know what word that is that I'm, th that I'm talking about the word genome is your genes it's your DNA and your genes now genome sounds like another word it sounds like you guessed it gnome which is even spelled the same pretty much g-n-o-m-e you know so now, why are they saying that our DNA genetics is the same as a gnome genome? Why is that? What's going on here? How did this mythical creature get involved into our gay little DNA genome? I have no idea. I just thought of it the other day, so I wanted to bring it up. I'm sure it's really, really important. You know, we still got other mythical gay creatures flying around. We got dragons. The sea or the dragon in China. We got elves in the North Pole on Christmas and at the, the shopping malls every Christmas. We got Easter bunny furry creatures. We got uh, freaking werewolves and horror movies, vampires and all that stuff. We got the Loch Ness Sea Monster. We got dinosaurs. We got like old gay dinosaurs still people talking about. We got, you know. We got monkeys who kind of look like humans who've been in the jungle for too long, you know. Bonobos, chimpanzees, they look like humans. They act kind of like humans. Orangutans. I have been into orangutans lately. They look really cool and interesting. Uh, so I was watching a bunch of orangutan videos on YouTube today and yesterday, but there's not very many videos on orangutans. And they're endangered. There's only about 13,000 of them left. In fact, all primates 
are pretty much endangered, or at least all great apes are, I think, or old world apes, new world apes. Somebody Google that. I could have sworn like all primates besides. Anyways, like all primates are endangered. Like gorillas, monkeys, bonobos, chimpanzees, apes. Um. There's so many different kinds. Um. And did, did humans. Um. Did humans turn into them over time through living in the jungle? The same way a pig turns into a boar when you put it in the jungle? You take a farm fresh pig, you put it in the jungle, so now it grows hair and tusks. It's, it's, I don't like to use the gay ass word evolution, but that's the only word that people have kind of created. It, it adapts and tr transforms in a, into a whole new creature depending on its environment. A pig into a boar, a human into a wild man, a human into a Bigfoot, into a gray alien, into a primate perhaps. All these other creatures that are probably, possibly, could be humans from another time who've just been spent a little bit too long away from civilization hanging out eating trees and leaves and things are, are you and me going to turn into primates if we hang out in the jungle too long i guess there's only one way to find out i feel myself turning into a spider queen creature uh, as i spend more and more time locked up away in my room uh, without talking to others in the dark i keep having thoughts in my head during the day of wanting to build a home gym in my room with ropes and bars and I keep calling it a spider gym. And in my head, I keep have, I keep wanting to build a spider gym in my room so that I can just uh, play on the gym and exercise all day away from the computers, the machines, the stress, the loneliness, the technology, the buzzing, the 5G radiation, gadiation. Start eating bugs and leaves and things like spiders do while hanging out on my home-built gym in my room all day long. Uh, probably stream it to Twitch, see if I can get some stream, um, some likes on my YouTube. Probably stream it 24-7, Spider Exercise Gym to Twitch, a spider streamer, constant. Um, and you know, it made me think of monkeys, because orangutans hang out a ton in trees. And there's a word for that, and it's called boreal. They're very boreal in that they love hanging around, swinging around through trees. And I thought, I kind of might like doing that a lot. Maybe maybe through trees, or maybe through a home gym in my room, or something like that. And I thought, well, why should I get my own place? And I thought, well, if I had my own place, I could build a spider gym in it. If I built one here, my sister might think I'm kind of weird if I built a spider gym in my room. Um, you know, so there, and you know, I'm wasting all my money on rent anyways. So if I had some sort of mortgage I was paying off, at least my rent would be going to something like that instead of to uh, something else. And then I could say I quote unquote owned a piece of property somehow, although still get raped by taxes every year. Um, so you know, it, you'll own you'll own nothing and be happy. You know, there's been, uh, our generation's living up in the gayest times ever. A rogue, evil, rebel government that taxes non-stop, that steals your land, that steals your car if you don't make car payments, repose your car, repose your house, and charges insane rates for taxes on anything, um, watches you all the time through cameras they build throughout their cities, which people really need to start knocking down, and people need to buy electric hacksaws, and um, do something about those beautifully magnific magnificent, magnificent, 5G uh, buildings that are all over your town. I counted about 20 in my area. And an electric hacksaw will actually be able to detail those beautiful towers and get them uh, to be uh, lying on the ground in a, in, a, in, a, in a grave, in a dirt grave. Um, electric hacksaws. Um, inside your phones, uh, you know, they say 5G's for the phones, but a lot of phones don't have 5G chips in them. So it only shows there are even bigger wires than they already are. Uh, because 5G is being used for phones, because there's no 5G chip in most of your phones. You can check if you want. If you open up your phone, the 5G chip part should be like to the right of the camera, but all the way to the right, I believe, maybe. Somewhere over there, maybe. I don't know. Ask Jan. He's a phone guy. Um, um, there's one thing I'm 
I'm grateful for everything because you're supposed to be and all that stuff and Hashem helps us with everything. But there's one thing I'm very grateful for is that the evil wicked creatures from the pit of hell who are causing so much fuss and stress for all the people on land, us, is that they, I think, I think they believe in a sense of karma and karmic retribution to an extent. It, can you believe if these evil faggy people didn't believe in karma? The stuff they'd be doing would be even more horrific than the horrific stuff they're already doing. I mean, all you have to do is look at that place next to Chisriel that is getting completely, you know, wiped off the map or whatever to see how unbelievably wicked and evil these people are. And without karmic, you know, it'd be even worse. But because these freaks actually believe in karma and stuff like that, which I'm not saying it's not real, I, I would consider it more God's judgment than some gay, new-agey, hippie thing called karma. But so because they believe in satanic karma or whatever, they're at least, I think, dialing down their wickedness by a tiny bit. Um, but it doesn't really look like it. But I think that they are. For example, if they wanted you whacked, you or me, they'd hire someone to do it. And then they'd say, well, it's not me doing it. It's some other guy who's, who's whacking the guy off. You know, I didn't do it. But they're still paying that guy to do it, you know? Um, but they're not doing it themselves. So they'd feel like, oh, well, all these people took this beautiful silver serum that we kind of told them they should Jesus take. Is in the garden. Now they're all in a grave. But, you know, they had a choice. They didn't have to. So it's not really our fault. You know, they're mass moiterers. Evil, wicked scum from the pits of hell. And, uh... But they believe in karma. I'm pretty sure they do. Because they're obsessed with tarot cards. They're obsessed with astrology. They're obsessed with all this gay stuff. That they also try to push onto normies. Witchcraft, all that stuff. Eating youngsters and a witch's yes, brew, all that stuff, Hansel and Gretel. They push it on to normies. Oh, now no, witchcraft no. is a very popular religion amongst uh, tween twink uh, gals and boys or whatever, you know? So, um, yeah. Anyways, makes you think about that genome thing, right? I think gnomes are probably pretty based. Jesus will be I also think him. this mindset of all people who aren't Christian are going to hell until the end of the world is there must be no rest probably not winter. correct. Now I don't know what happens for sure after you die, but it just seems weird of me to think that <clears throat> all these people would go to hell because they're not um, following Jesus Christ. Um, you know, I see plenty of propaganda from satanic music videos Jesus will be that agony. goes against Christ, of course. Right. Definitely see an agenda there. there must be no Christians are being persecuted more than any group on the planet right now, that's for sure. And have been throughout history, probably. But, um... It just seems strange that this guy would come along and tell people to worship him and not the Father. And the only way to the Father is through him. Like, why did he make that rule? The Father in the Old Testament made no such rule that, hey, if a guy comes along and says to talk to me, you actually have to talk through him first. You better do what, you, what, better do what he says and talk through him. And then he'll relay that message to me. It rubs me the wrong way. It really does. I don't want to sound like a weirdo, but it rubs me the wrong way. And, um, so there you go. Of course, I, I'm not a Satanist. Definitely not. Yuck. Um, in fact, in my, uh, Kabbalah studies right now, I'm learning about Satan, and I'll let you guys know how that goes. But, uh, one of the things, I think, it might be like an inner serpent creature that's in all of us that goes against each of our good ambitions through our ten sephirot in our body, in our tree of life, 
for each good suffered in our body, Jesus there's like a serpent Lord. Satan that goes against it. For every good thought, there's like a bad accuser no, going the opposite way. Feel, and you shouldn't help that old lady across the street. What if you get hit by a car? You should actually kick her ass no, into the street. Feel. You know, there's an, there's an opposite evil. It's called the evil inclination Heavenly in uh, Judaism or something or Kabbalah or whatever. Uh, but don't, uh, uh, I will tell you guys, uh, what I find out, uh, cause I'm still reading about it right now, so I haven't quite, I don't have any idea about it right now exactly. The problem with Jewish Kabbalistic studies is that there's like, there's 70 different interpretations of the Kabbalah, or the, and so that's a lot of interpretations. But I'm going to go with the ones that feel the best, okay? There's 70 different interpretations of the Kabbalah, and that is seen through the word of Sod, which is Hebrew for secret, which is numerically the number 70. And that's how you know there's 70 secret interpretations of the Kabbalah. It's that simple, it's that easy, there you go. This is how it works. It's a very simple process to figure out what the Kabbalah means and what the Old Testament means. You look at what God says with his exact Hebrew words and letters, you add those up, you add those up, and then you take it by feel. And you think, okay, you interpret it yourself, you meditate on it, say, okay, God's talking about secrets here. Secret adds up to seventy. Jesus will be in agony. That means God's talking there must be seventy secrets in this boy. Boom. You're a Kabbalist. It's that simple, it's that easy. All of a sudden you're a Jewish prophet. Making, no making waves, and all of a sudden, you're writing the Zohar, like Rabbi Shimon Yohai did 700 or so years ago in Spain. I think Portugal, somewhere around there? I don't know. But, yeah, interesting stuff. Just trying to lay it out for you guys. Uh, I'll post a link to my Jesus teacher's book in the description. It's free. Until the end of if you guys are interested in, in this stuff, you should really read it. It's yeah, 800 it's pages. I'm on about page 500. But if you want to get into Jewish Kabbalism, it's the best book you can read ever. So I'd recommend it. Kabbalism is interpretations of the Old Testament. The five books of Moses and the prophets who also wrote about those books and stuff in the Old Testament. Uh, but do, do you get why it rubs me the wrong way that God wrote this, this Old Testament and nowhere did he say, look, if a guy comes along in a couple hundred years and he says, actually, you need to, you need to worship me and not, not, you need to worship me and forget about the old book that God wrote. Do you, you see why some people would be skeptical of that? Because people are good with the old book that God wrote. If you want to read the new book, the New Testament, go ahead. Read the New Testament. But they're separate books and they're, it's kind of like a separate decision. Because they're two different religions and they ha they're very different in the what they stand for. Flow. The New Testament, it's kind of like, look, we're the Jewish book and we're the Jewish God, but actually I'm the Jewish God. I came as a man, but I'm also alone on earth. Uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But if you want to talk to the Father aspect of me and get into heaven, you need to talk to the Son aspect of me first. Also, um, I forgot what I was going to say. Anyways, it's just... Anyways, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just, it's a very complicated realm we're in. And I, I do like how the old test, the, sorry, the New Testament simplifies things. It says you worship Jesus, you go to heaven. It's that simple. Jesus is in the, the Old Testament, I have no idea how you get to heaven. I think Jewish people are, the Old Testament is more about good deeds and praying and repenting. And the New Testament is about that stuff too. The New Testament is about repenting, 
praying or praying to Christ. Okay? And, um, and uh, love your neighbor as yourself, which is great stuff. It's very good stuff. But they're still very different. Like, um, anyways. Some of you guys like when I talk about the Jewish stuff. A lot of you guys don't. I get it. It's just... Yeah. Anyways, I gotta... What time is it? I'm at, I'm at work, of course. I try to do these podcasts when I'm at work. Jesus to make the shift go by faster. But yesterday, I just behaved like a total cave creature. I was in my room, total darkness all day, even when the sun was out. Had the windows shut. Didn't talk to anyone. It felt like total crud. Felt like crud all day yesterday. It just felt like a cave creature made out of freaking cave crud. And my it's because my sleep schedule is getting so much worse because I work a night job. But also, I'm a night person, so they add up to even worse sleep schedules. Plus, I had a bottle of wine the day before, I think. Um, not a bottle, you know, just a, a large cup. Not even that large. Well, okay, maybe a little large. And um, filled up the biggest jug I've ever had. Maybe I'll show you guys a picture. It's insane. And... Um, a, a jug of yellow gold I'm talking about and uh, I just I just I just didn't feel good yesterday because I woke up late and then I was in my room all day I was too kind of creeped out to go out of my room and talk to my sister and uh, I, I didn't eat until like 10 or 11 p.m. and um, I didn't want to I was too shy or too anxious to go talk uh, or leave my room yesterday, talk to, talk to my sister. I was too sh uh, anxious to go out of my room. I, I just laid in bed a lot, didn't do anything. Didn't, I exercised a little bit, I, arm exercises, you know. It's just, I just don't know what I'm doing in this realm. I don't know what I'm, why I'm here. I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. I just make cartoons. I have like no hope. And a lot of stuff. Uh, I felt like I had something a few weeks ago. Now I feel like I have nothing. I feel like I have nothing now, kind of. And a few weeks ago I felt like I at least kind of had something. Now I just feel like I have nothing. I feel kind of hopeless. Like there's no hope. Um, and uh, I do like that Christianity kind of maybe, maybe it gave me more hope and stuff in my own salvation but I feel like it's not complicated enough and I feel like I like that Judaism is a little bit more complicated I'm taking everything by feel and intuition and what I'm intrigued and interested in but at the end of the day I want to be a good person I want to be sinless I want to repent I want to pray as much as possible 24 7 if possible be a good person do a few good deeds here and there I want to I want to but also, I just want to leave my room more and do other things because I'm so bored and it breaks my mind into a million pieces being stuck in my room all day. But I'm just like, I just don't leave. And it's just so hard to get out of bed. And then when I get out of bed, I go into my chair. And then it's just so hard to get out of my chair to do anything. Even to go get water or food, go to the bathroom, anything. It's just hard to get out of my chair. Or, or, or even get out of my room, or even out of my bed. To the extent where I'll, I'll, get, I'll wake up, I'll just lay in bed some more, I'll get into my chair, I'll, I won't go to the bathroom for a few hours until I really have to go, then I'll, maybe I'll go to the bathroom, then maybe I'll lie back down in bed, then maybe I'll get back in my chair. I just wish I had the motivation and strength to do a hobby in my room or anywhere after leaving my chair, if I could just do arts and crafts more in my room instead of sitting down all the time. And I feel like sitting down all the time is going to destroy my colon, give it diabolic cancer somehow from 
sitting so, so much, and in awkward positions as well, weird sitting positions, my legs up on the bed, on, on, on top of the desks, on top of a, uh, a, a footrest, but laying like, uh, like a monkey in my chair, in a weird posture, monkey posture. So, and I'm already 32, I'm already like halfway to dead, or maybe as Jan would say, three-fourths of the way there, you know? So, time keeps going faster, and I can't look back at the past because now it's all gone, and still don't have a wife or even close to it, and all these normies have jobs or wives or whatever, and I don't even know how they do it because they work a lot and they do their hobbies and they exercise and I don't have the motivation to do a lot of that stuff or something like that. They do drink a lot of energy drinks maybe and uh, I just, this isn't the right society or civilization for someone like me. I wish I was growing my own food and eating my own meat and rabbit meat or something like that making my own soda pot, some sort of life other than sitting in a chair. But I will say this, in my current life circumstances, although it's pathetic and probably retarded and stupid, I do like making cartoons for people, even though they'll forget the cartoon in about five or ten minutes, actually more like two or three minutes, but for that one and a half minutes or however long the cartoon is, they might get a smile or a chuckle out at least one or two times and that's basically what my entire existence is amount, amassed to right now is giving random strangers on the internet a few smiles during their entire day and then doing the same thing the next day with a new cartoon that I spend hours on that they watch once forget about two minutes after but maybe they'd smile during their one minute watching during their 24 hour day period and that's what my life is kind of amassed and amounted to and that's kind of what's driving me to be alive right now is giving random strangers smiles through cartoons because that's the only thing I know how to do, sort of. And even then, it's kind of questionable if I know how to do it because my cartoons... It's not the best drawing. And also, my mouse has been broken for years now. Since I broke the last one, I threw it at the wall and destroyed it. That was the last mouse that I loved. And now, I've tried over 15 mice and none of them feel correct. They all feel broken and shitty which is another sign that this world is destroyed and it's being destroying and it's getting replaced and retarded because I can't even use a mouse anymore and if I try, they all break or they just don't feel right and I'm mostly leaning on the don't feel right part but also that they're gay, retarded, broken mice and no one knows how to make a mouse nowadays that actually works and so now I haven't used a proper mouse in a year I haven't been able to play a MOBA game like Heroes of the Storm because it requires a working mouse, a good mouse I don't know. I'm, I'm using a very expensive mouse. It still doesn't feel right or work right. So I don't know what the deal is now with mice. I don't know if anyone else has experienced this with a computer mouse. Write in the comments if you have, please. It just feels like mice don't work anymore. And uh, there you go. So I got to finish a work patrol right now real quick. Probably take about 10 or 15 minutes. And then I'll come back. Uh, I'll be right back. Now it's time to have a snuggle with my very best friend in the whole wide world. You. <laughs> well, I'm glad you could come over. See you soon. Bye. the moon. <laughs> 